Hello friends. Today we have got Dr. Rajnish Gaur. He is a senior scientist, scientist F in the Department of Biotechnology. And he has been to Germany and France on DLR and Cephipra project. So welcome, uh, Dr. Rajnish. Uh, Thank you. And may I request you to share your academic and professional journey so far so that viewers can have a better idea about you. So first of all, I would like to congratulate you for uh, initiating such a, you know, uh, initiative on YouTube because this will be very helpful for uh, beginners, uh, uh, scientists who are starting their career. Uh, such kind of a uh, short videos, they are they are going to be very helpful. Thank so you. So this is my uh, personal opinion. Thank you. And uh, then uh, the. Uh, uh, as far as my academic profile goes, uh, I have completed uh, graduation from uh, Delhi University. I'm a double graduate. And uh, then I have done professional course as B pharmacy from Jamia Hangul University, Delhi. Then I have done uh, a, a, a one year job in IIT Delhi. And from there, uh, I went for MTech in biotechnology in Nana University, Chennai. And then I I, I worked in uh, IIT Delhi again for one year, and then uh, I went to a PhD in Germany. Actually, uh, let me make a point here. Uh, generally, in European countries, which is very useful for the uh, people, uh, the German PhD is not considered uh, as PhD because the people who are working for PhD projects they are considered as employee there. And they have to follow the same norms which other employees are following. Other employees, regular employees have to work maybe a little bit more, but these people, they have to work for lesser number of hours. So yeah. they, they yeah. are basically your contract. Yeah, thank you very much for making this very important uh, observations yeah. uh, that PhD students are treated as an employee. And uh, yeah. one more thing I must say, uh, to our viewers that uh, most of those departments which require industry exposure in European country, it is mandatory that you get industry exposure before you get into uh, your degree. So, uh, Rajesh, can you tell us more about your PhD journey, which you did yeah. as a part of DLR project and you were in Germany in those days? Yes. So, uh, I remember it was somewhere around 20 years ago when 20, 25 years ago, when I was looking for a uh, higher education in uh, in biotechnology area, because uh, the kind of environment I, I, I was entrenched in IIT Delhi mm -hmm. while working in biochemical engineering department, I realized that there is no scope in biotechnology if I don't have higher education uh, or at least PhD. I cannot go into the academic stage. I cannot shine basically in my academic and research career. So, Simultaneously, I was at the, at such an age where I cannot afford uh, five or six years of PhD. So I, I very deliberately chosen uh, any European country because they are the uh, normally in Germany they don't take more than four years for a PhD. So I have chosen that, and I was looking for an opportunity, and I got a uh, collaborative project in which there was an scope for continuation of the fellowship as a PhD. So I joined uh, one of the topmost lab, which was working on molecular farming. Molecular farming is basically growing the biomolecules in the plant. Plant was tobacco plant, because that was the most successful at that time. Even today, the tobacco is the most successful. There's uh, many immunoglobulins, antibodies, and other proteins, human proteins, they are grown and extracted for pharmaceutical purposes. So uh, that was the turning point in my life. And uh, there was a C difference, even if, I, even if I was working in IIT Delhi. But uh, at that time, the, the uh, procurement of foreign chemicals was a major hurdle. You know, if I ordered Sigma chemical, let's say, that used to take around six months in India. But in Germany, if you order such kind of a, uh, chemicals that will be on your table, you don't have to run around. And uh, though that chemical will be within three days maximum that will be on your table. So that actually creates a lot of difference in the speed of research, uh, which uh, in, in India we do. 
I mean, I'm talking somewhere around 20, 25 years ago. Uh, now things have changed. And the government has opened up the uh, these, these sectors and chemicals are easily available. But at that time, this was not the case. So there was a sea difference even in the approach, you know, the way they think, the way they treat the research, that was totally different. The difference, then later on I realized that difference in thinking is because of the kind of funding they are getting. The kind of funding they are getting is the fraud from the industry side. And here in India, we have more of government supported projects. So that creating a lot of difference. Can you uh, also share us some experience uh, in France, which you avail as part of the FIPER project? Yes. So in France, I realized uh, that uh, the approach is same as in the Germany. Maybe it. I I was in a kind of a remote area. It was not remote from scientific point of view because it was headquarter of ENDL, Grenoble. I was at the Grenoble and near the synchrotron facility because I was working in the structural biology field. So I was I was you know I was at a very good place in that sense. But it is a cluster. A Grenoble has a cluster of many institutions from CNRS, IDA, EMBL, and the state university. Uh, there were three state universities there. So it was a very good uh, educational cluster uh, in Grenoble. And uh, then they have some autonomous uh, institutions like we have under DST and DBT. And, uh, but, but the German approach is more industrialized, I, I would say. Or maybe I was working in more basic side uh, in during my postdocs in France. I did not, you know, expose to that kind of a approach. But they, I realized that German approach is much more industrialized, and it has much more orientation towards the commercialization of uh, uh, products. So the and also it's culturally wise. Uh, Germans, they, uh, I mean, in German universities, I have seen they are more dedicated uh, to their work, and they. They don't work for longer hours, but they, but they don't work with very, uh, you know, they work very hard with determination and to achieve something. That is their Can goal. you tell me, Ranish, how much time you divide? Because you said that you are working as an employee and then uh, yeah. uh, you are given less workload as compared to regular employees. So how much yeah. time you are giving in the department in academics and how much time you are spending in the company? Yeah, so... Uh, this uh, I was not working on a company project. It was a, a, a pure research project. So I was not exposed to the company project, but there are company projects in our laboratory. I remember there was one project from Colgate and uh, because our work group was working on antibodies, so they have the idea to, uh, to generate, they, they give the project in our laboratory to generate antibodies against streptophylococcus, which is a common cause of uh, uh, tooth caries. So that that project, it was not successful because the antibody did not grow in the tobacco plant uh, very well, uh, the kind of gene they have given. So, but, but there are projects like this and yeah. some of them, they yeah. were very successful. Can you tell our viewers how they should approach for joint research projects, how they can participate, like you participated in two of them, so what, yeah. how the new students would participate in those projects? Yes. So there are actually two routes uh, to get exposure in the developed world, especially in European countries. U.S. does not, U.S. has very limited opportunity in that sense. And uh, I think the DST and, you know, has to look uh, more such kind of a collaboration in the U.S. rather than supporting the direct sponsorships. These are indirect routes, I would say. And uh, the people has to approach really these forwards in their field from both sides. You know? So if they want to have a fellowship under a project, then they, they really have to find out the people who are really at the top uh, in their field. Because in that cases, it is very good and they get good fellowship, not, not a very small, a good kind of fellowship they will get in their postdocs. So as, as far as I remember, the DLR provides very good uh, fellowship under the joint projects, which is equivalent to their normal fellowship. So, viewers, what he's suggesting that you can look for faculty in your respective institute who have got international projects where there is a possibility that you could be part of the program and visit laboratory in another country. 
Besides that, there are other programs which provide you short-term exposure, two to six months uh, during your doctoral program to go abroad uh, by several agencies. So you may explore those programs also. Uh, Rajneesh, can you tell us something about the challenges when you know, what you faced when you were availing these fellowships? Uh, it could be cultural, yes. it could be academic, it could be... Yes, any... no doubt, no doubt the Europe. I, I went from India to uh, Europe for the, you know, when I was out of India, it was Europe. And in Europe, each country has its own language. So language is definitely a barrier. It is always wonderful to spend few uh, weeks, at least, you know, uh, when you are landing there, after finishing your uh, basic amenities, the stuff like accommodation, setting up all those things, and you know, food and etc., where you can get what, what you can get where. So you should spend at least few weeks to learn the basics of that language. It is always helpful, always very helpful in the sense that it will give you a better coordination, better interaction with your colleagues, and also, it will helpful in your real life because if you want to buy something, then it is very easy to speak in the language. So mm -hmm. this thing I would really appreciate because it also helps in the scientific interaction. You will involve more, you will engage more with your colleagues, not only with your colleagues, but with people from other laboratories or for visitors. Yeah. So that will be helpful. Yeah, Rajneesh, you are a senior official with the government of India. Uh, can you elaborate if these fellowships or these opportunities help you in your career growth any, at any time? Well, definitely yes, because uh, uh, fortunately I, I you know landed in a job in University of Pune as a lecturer uh, in bioinformatics. That was because of uh, because of my uh, exposure to bioinformatics field during my PhD uh, and uh, and I have a really you know uh, kind of exposure which, which which probably I will never get in uh, uh, in India I will not say now because now we have very good laboratories there like in IASC and other autonomous institutions we are having the uh, researchers which are of the equal caliber and equal resources they have in their laboratory now that that resources uh, you know component is dissolving slowly very fast rather i would say but at that time there was a sea gap between the indian laboratories and and the uh, foreign laboratories and that exposure that resources that actually created to do something novel and to take new initiative the good part in germany is they give you the freedom in your phd to explore new ideas so now there now nowadays there is a trend even in india india has more trend nowadays if you explore new a, a new uh, idea you can start a start a startup which was not the trend at that time so now there is a more thrust in novelty previously there was a thrust in novelty now there is a more thrust for novel ideas you know yeah. if you have a good idea which can be commercialized sooner or later you can start your own startup so that's a difference. Yeah, friends, it's yeah, a wonderful yeah. observation made by Dr. Rajneesh that uh, when you are into the higher academics, when you are doing research, you find so many things which you feel could be worth trying to the market. And there are a lot of possibilities from the government as well as from angel funder uh, for to support your startup. So Rajneesh, my, on my last question, what would be your advice to the future aspirants? I would say that uh, nowadays uh, sticking to one field is uh, is uh, uh, is not a norm uh, because science is getting more and more complex and it is really coming at the uh, interface now. So people have to find their postdocs where they are interested to solve a biological problem with the help of other tools, not only with biological tools, but with the help of uh, uh, different tools, suppose, they want to go, let's say nowadays quantum is more, uh, you know, vocal uh, in, in many forums. So if they want to explore their biological idea with the help of quantum engineering, they should explore postdocs in quantum engineering area because that will actually help in solving the biological problem by utilizing quantum as a tool 
or if they would really want to go, uh, they would they want to test the computational idea, quantum computational idea, or biological uh, problem understanding, or for physical or chemical problem understanding. I what I'm going to say is they should really explore. They are uh, opposed to. They should make it as a platform to learn new things rather than the continuation of whatever they have done in PhD. So this is my. Uh, this if if yes, they get the opportunity to uh, to you know have exposure to some entrepreneurship uh, startup or some other company, I would prefer to go there. Yeah, I think it's a very one uh, nice idea because all of us have grown subject vertical. So we know biology, yeah. we know chemistry, we know. But today yeah. we are talking of integration. We are talking about interdisciplinary approach. So thank yes. you, Doctor Rajneesh, on that note, and thank you, viewers, for your time. I hope you have enjoyed this video.